Oh, hey Explorers. I'm glad you caught me here today in front of my card tower because that is what we are doing today. Not necessarily building a card tower, but we are talking about building and construction. So as you can see before me, I had a card tower going. I was doing pretty good. Did you know that the tallest card tower out there is held by Brian Berg and is 25 feet, nine inches tall? Mine's almost that tall, right? Okay, maybe not. I'll get there, right? Maybe not today. All right, so my name is Logan and today we are going to be exploring building materials. Now, the paper tower I had in front of me, that's not a really conventional material to build with. Even these two paper towers next to me, not very conventional. Our conventional building materials are typically things like wood, steel, and concrete. Wood's one of our oldest building materials. So if we think back, we have one building built in Japan. It is called the Hurayumi Temple. I hope I pronounced that right. It is over 1300 years old. It was built in 700 AD. That's insane. And it's still standing today. So we could build with wood, but we also see a lot of buildings like this one here made out of concrete and steel and the combination of these. So each building material has its own special properties. So like wood, it's very cheap and easy to build with. However, it's easy to burn and it warps and can shrink due to weather. You have things like steel, which are really, really strong and heavy, but they're also kind of expensive. Or concrete. Concrete's really, really useful, except for the fact that it takes a long time to set. It has to sit there and dry before we can use it. We do have buildings like the temple that I was just talking about, but we also have tall skyscrapers. Now those can't be made out of wood, because wood's not that strong. But we do have other materials like steel and uh, concrete that we use more conventionally. So if we think about the tallest tower in the world, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, it is 2,722 feet tall. That's almost half of a mile tall. That's insane. Okay, and this one is a combination of these two materials, steel and reinforced concrete. So here in a little bit, we're actually gonna get down into why they might use these different materials. All right, so for our building materials today, to compare materials, you guys are going to need six pieces of standard notebook paper, and you're gonna need six pieces of construction paper. When you get these two, make sure that they're the same size. If they're not, go ahead and trim them so that they are the same size so we can get an accurate comparison between the two, okay? You're also going to need a measuring tape, you're going to need scissors to help cut your paper. You're not gonna need tape. For this whole challenge, to make it a challenge, we're not using tape. All right. Go collect your materials and tune back in in just a second. All right, so to start, we're gonna take our piece of uh, notebook paper and our piece of construction paper. Just hold them in your hand. Which one's heavier, okay? Which one's sturdier? Is one really flimsy? Does one have more support to it? Okay, so think about these two materials like the materials I was talking about earlier, like wood, steel, and concrete. They have different properties, and that's gonna change how we build with them, okay? So first, we're just gonna test these kinds of, their material strength. To do that, we're gonna take our notebook paper, and we're gonna roll it into a tube, okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect, just a nice tube. So we're gonna test to see how strong it is by crushing it. Whoops, the babies. Okay, so crushing it sideways. Just how much force does it take, ready? <clears throat> this paper's really strong. Oh, not really. Okay, so we know how that one crushes. What about construction paper? Okay, so we're gonna roll this one into a tube. We're gonna try to crush that. And if I push on it harder, it takes a lot more strength to actually squish that construction paper. So we can tell just by these little quick tests we did, see which one's heavier, which one's stronger to compress it that these materials have different properties and it's gonna end up building them differently, okay? So our first challenge, we're gonna start off with our notebook paper. So this is why I had you grab six. This first one is all crumpled up. We need flat pieces and we're gonna trim them into quarters, okay? So every single piece of notebook paper, all five of those pieces are gonna be cut down into quarters. 
So you could just take your paper, cut it in half one way, okay, and then cut it in half the other way, so that we all have these quarter sheets of notebook paper. Once you do that, you're going to start building your tower. Okay, so here's my tower right here. I have extra materials. Okay, so I had these note cards and I folded them in different, in different ways so that I could actually build with them. Okay, so just a start is what I've got here, but I wanna see what you guys can do. So I want you to go collect your materials, cut them in quarters, and then start building your tower. Once you're finished building your tower, take your measuring tape and see how tall it is. Take a picture of that, share it with your classmates, your teachers, and us here at Exploration Place by tagging us on social media. All right, go ahead and start building. See if you can't get taller than my tower is here. All right, you guys just saw my best attempt at the notebook paper tower, and now we're going to get on to our construction paper. So just like we did in the notebook paper, we're gonna cut these into quarters. Then you're going to think, whenever I build my construction paper tower, it has different properties than that notebook paper did. So are you gonna build it differently? Do you think a wood tower would be the same as a steel tower or the same as a concrete tower? Okay, so each of these are gonna be a little bit differently. Think about that when you're building. For instance, as you can see here, my notebook paper, and my construction paper are folded differently. Even with these other ones, I folded them differently because I knew I could get different stuff out of this construction paper. You can even tell, this is a lot taller. It almost reaches over my head, okay? So as you're building with your construction paper, think how it's going to be different than your notebook paper. Then just like you did last time, you're gonna take a picture of it, share it with your classmates, your teachers, and us. Again, tag us on social media. And then we're going to get on to our next challenge, okay? So go ahead, pause the video here and come back to us when you're all finished. All right, so you guys saw our attempt at the notebook paper tower. You saw our attempt at the construction paper tower. The two of mine varied in how I built them. How did yours compare to mine? Did you guys go for similar structures? How did yours compare to your classmates? Was each person's nuances a little differently? So that's kind of what we can expect based on how our brains think and also the fact that these properties of these towers would be different. What if we combined both papers and made one tower of both? That's actually how standard construction is done, taking multiple, multiple materials and combining them. Okay, we even create composites, which is taking two materials like steel and concrete and making them into one to make reinforced concrete. It's called a composite, and that's actually what we're going to do first to kind of learn a little bit about material strength and how composites work. So to do that, you are going to need glue. Elmer's glue works. If you don't have Elmer's glue, any glue will work. You're going to need water, some kind of cup to measure it with, a bowl to mix in, a mixing material. You're going to need scissors newspaper, and a plastic or a baking tray that you can cover in plastic wrap to keep clean up easier. And we're going to end up making paper mache. If you've ever whacked a pinata, you know how strong paper mache can really be. So all that is, is paper and glue mixed together, creating a composite, taking two different materials, combining them to one to create something stronger. Okay, so go ahead and collect out your materials, and then we're gonna go through this quick process of how you actually make paper mache. All right, pause the video, go grab your materials. All right, so we're getting ready to build a composite. We're gonna be combining different materials to make one stronger material. So I've already went ahead and I've saran wrapped my plastic tray. This is just gonna make cleanup afterwards a lot easier. Now, we have our bowl and we have water. You're going to mix the water and the glue in equal parts. So if I use one full ramekin of water, I'm gonna use one full ramekin of glue. If you wanna make more for a bigger paper mache project after this, you can use more materials on either side. If you do not have glue, 
you can substitute it with flour. And if you do use the flour, just know you have to mix it a little more because it's going to be pretty clumpy. So you just got to get all those clumps out. Okay, so as you can see right now, this kind of looks like an egg. You got the egg yolk and the egg whites. We need to mix this all together, scramble it, if you will, so that all the lumps are out and that it's just one smooth texture. So just that little mixing, there's still a little bit of clumps, so I'm gonna keep mixing it here. Okay, that looks nice and smooth. So we have our glue mixture, or our flour mixture if you don't have glue. And then I took one sheet of newspaper and I made it into strips. And these strips just have to be about an inch wide and maybe like four to five inches long. What you're gonna do is you're gonna dip the strip of newspaper all the way in the glue. This is gonna get a bit messy, so make sure you ask your parents permission before you get started with any of this. Okay, so it's covered in glue, it's dripping, we don't need that much. You're just gonna take your fingers and squeegee some of it off. You can see how much just came out of that. So we don't need a whole lot of glue. You're gonna lay it flat on our tray. You're gonna come in with another strip. And this can be as big or as small as you want. But as you could tell from mine, I didn't want to be too big. I just wanted a quick paper mache project just to see the properties. So it doesn't really have to be that too that big. When you're laying these down, make sure you layer them on top of each other, kind of like shingles on a roof, so that they overlap and they can form that bond. Once you have enough going sideways, you're then gonna want to crisscross them. That just gives it extra strength. So I'll just show you kind of what I did there you would have a few sideways and then lay a few up and down. Not in a T shape, in a square, just so we get those properties. As you can tell right now, this is still really floppy. So it has to dry before we get those properties that we're looking for. And it's gonna take a little bit to dry, it might take overnight. But once it does dry, you get this really thick, hard paper mache composite material. And you can see the difference. So in this right here, it's really floppy, not a whole lot to it. But with the paper mache, it's really solid, really, really hard and rigid. So we got a composite by combining two different materials. If you want to make it even stronger, you can add more layers. If you want to build a whole new project with it, you can wait till it dries and then add wet layers onto the dry to create something new. But for now, this is all we need just to understand how a composite is made, okay? So, speaking of combining materials, our final challenge for you guys is to take our two materials from earlier, our construction paper and our notebook paper, and we're gonna want to build a final tower using both of them. So all five sheets of quartered up notebook paper and all five sheets of quartered up construction paper you guys are going to create your tower out of that. Okay, so now you're gonna get new properties. This is lighter, so it can be going on top, or it can be made into different shapes. This is a little bit sturdier, and it's also a little bit heavier. So you're gonna to want to build a tower, and then take a picture of it, standing next to it or with your tape measure, send it to your classmates and your teacher, and then tag us here on social media at Exploration Place. All right, thank you guys so much for exploring with us today, and I hope you guys have a great day.